everyone, and welcome back to Mech Tech with Mr. Sullivan. Uh, in this video, uh, we're going to go through how to make curved text um, on any uh, any rounded shape. Okay, so uh, here's some examples of what we're going to make. Uh, we're specifically going to go over this one, and then we will use those skills for you to be able to create uh, create it on a cylinder and a half sphere. Okay. But before we start, we need to do what we do every time and rename it. So it's going to be your name and then curved text. Okay. So once you have that renamed, then you can go ahead and get started. All right. So let me go ahead and get these ones out of the way. And then we're going to make this one right here. Okay, so let's begin. I'm going to start off by deleting this one. Then I'm going to go over here. So you have the shape menus. and You have this drop down. You're going to go to the uh, shape generator section and then go to all. Once you click on that, you'll notice that there's a lot here and there's multiple pages down here at the bottom. We're going to go to page eight because we want this extruded curve. Okay. We're going to click, drag that out here, and then we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. Okay. Remember, a quick way to rotate it is to hold shift when you grab this arrow button and rotate it around. Okay. Then we're going to resize it. If you hold shift and grab one of the white corner buttons, it will resize along all three axes all at the same time, keeping it nice and uniform. Okay. So once you get it uh, resized, something a little bit bigger, something a little bit easier to work with, then you're going to go ahead and add the text. Okay, So again, in the shape menu, you're going to go to text and numbers. Then you're going to use text. Okay, For this, if you really want to go use that script text that we used on the name tag, that is okay. Um, or uh, or you can just use this one because really I just want you to understand the concept and the, use the skills behind this to be able to use this in the future. All right. So again, we're going to resize it by holding shift. Kind of shrink that down a little bit. Let me shrink it just a little bit more. Um, overall size really doesn't matter for this. We just want to make sure that, uh, that it'll fit on here. Okay. So then we need to rotate it 90 degrees so it's standing straight up. Grab this top arrow and bring it up because we don't want it to be sitting on the work plane. Okay. Once you get here, you're going to take this and you're right now it's sitting at 4.3. Okay. You want to take it and you want to stretch it all the way through. You can take it up over 100. That's completely fine. All right. And then we're going to align this just to make it easier. In case you uh, accidentally miss a step, it's a little bit easier to get back to where everything is. All right. So from here, we're going to go back over to the shape menu. We're going to grab basic shapes. You're going to grab a box. Okay. We're going to change the color of the box so it's a little bit easier to tell the difference between the box and the lettering. We want this box to be wider than the uh, S-curve here, this wave shape, and we want it to be uh, thicker this way, okay? So we don't want the, we want the letters to stick out of both sides, all right? And then we are going to lift it up to where just the letters are covered, not the extruded curve, okay? From here, this is where it might get a little tricky for some of you, but I'll show you a couple different ways to do this. But we're going to want to turn these letters into a hole. So you're going to click on them, turn it into a hole, and then we want to select just the lettering and the box. Okay, we do not want to select this extruded curve. Okay, so if you, if you hold shift and click on the box, you'll see that it says shapes two. That means I only have the lettering and the box selected. If I had the extruded curve selected, it'd say shapes three, 
we do not want that, all right? So just the lettering and the box. For some of you, if you get that weird side menu on your Chromebook where if you touch shift, it wants you to hit all different kinds of buttons and runs you through a menu for it. If you're having that issue, you can use the drag and uh, outline feature where you get that red box. But if I go like this, where I'm, it looks like I'm just gonna select the box and the lettering, I'm still capturing the bottom of that S-curve, which is why it still says shapes three. So if you have to go that route, go over and select it this way. Because remember, any piece that is within that, it doesn't have to be the whole shape, but any piece that is within that box will get selected. So now it says shapes two. I do not have this S curve selected. All right. Uh, but before we actually go to, to, to group the lettering and the box, we want to select all and realign, okay? With it realigned, <clears throat> it's gonna it's gonna help out quite a bit, again, if we miss a step, all right? So now I have the lettering and the box selected. I'm going to group those. Once it's done grouping, you'll notice that the lettering will punch all the way through the box, and I'm gonna show you something kind of cool, okay? So that lettering went all the way through, but it did not go through the S-curve. So if we change that into a hole, which is the next step, you'll notice that it did not go through the extruded curve, okay? The reason for that is because we're actually going to duplicate this extruded curve, and we're gonna get it out of the way. We're going to duplicate that extruded curve and then get it out of the way. There we go. Once we have that done, we're going to take the one that is still within this hold box with the lettering, and we're going to shrink it down to where it's just below the surface to where it goes to that shadowed gray, okay? So let me do that one more time. You're gonna grab this top box and you're gonna shrink it down. Notice how it's still bright purple. Once it goes beneath the surface, it'll go to that shadowed gray color. We can drop it down one more just to be safe, okay? So once we get that done, you can change the color if you want. Let's go green, okay? Whatever color you choose for this is what color your lettering will be, all right? So once we get here, we're gonna select both shapes. So you have this hold box with the lettering already cut out and this green extruded curve, okay? Shapes two, we have both of them selected and we're going to hit group. What that's going to do is it's going to cut out just that lettering in that curved shape. Okay, so if you look at it from the top, you can see that it kept that curve. All right, the reason why we made this extra one here is we're going to bring that back over, select both of the objects, okay, so shapes two, and then we're going to align them. So we're going to center this up, and then if we go straight into the middle, it kind of looks a little funny, but if we go bring it out to the front, if we, oh, it won't let me bring it out to the front. So what we'll do is we will select just that S curve, and I'm gonna hit the up arrow on the keyboard once, okay? So that'll bring that lettering out, and it makes the lettering disappear in the back, okay? While still maintaining that curve. Kind of cool, but from here, we want to group it all. So we're going to group it. You'll notice that the, uh, the lettering and the S-curve will become the same color. To fix that, click on the, your solid color here, and then click on multicolor, and it looks exactly the way it did, and you can move it around as one piece, okay? So that is your instructions for this. You're gonna go through and you're gonna do the exact same thing, but you're gonna do it on a half sphere. If I can select the cylinder over here, there we go. And you're gonna do it on a cylinder. So as you can see, it mirrors the same curve 
on both of these objects, okay? That is what we're going for. You're going to make all three of these to complete this assignment all on the same work plane as you could, uh, as you saw earlier in the video. Once you have one made, go ahead and move it out of the way. You can go get it later because you can zoom out quite a ways so you can really get it out of, out of your way. Um, and then go grab it later, bring it back onto the work plane before you submit it, okay? The way you're going to submit this one is you're going to go to export and then STL, okay? Except you want to select everything in the design and then you will select STL for 3D printing, all right? Hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys learned some good skills from this that we're gonna use later in the class. Thank you guys for paying attention and good luck. Let's get to work.